Welcome to Christchurch, I'm Tabs. And I'm Hetty. A special welcome if you're new joining us today. We are a Church of England congregation at the heart of Southport with a heart for Southport. Yep, uh, we join together here in a bunch of different ways to build community where we can each uh, grow and seek the power of God to bring hope in relevant ways to today's society. Uh, we're, we're about uh, putting Jesus at the centre and seeing lives changed. We are. We're going to have a, a time of worship together online in this video, along with Steve, continuing our three-part series on the book of Haggai, Haggai, Haggai. Most people say Haggai. Rob says Haggai. Yeah, maybe Other he's thinking maybe of Scottish. Things. Haggis. Haggis. You know, Hag maybe it's the book of Haggis to him. No, I don't know. I don't it's, think. It was a good sermon, though, last uh, week from Steve, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It was really good. Very good. Um, and so hopefully today will be just as good if not better. Mm. Mm. But before that, we do have some news from our CCS family. We, have, we like news, we do. don't we? Yeah. We have a deeper, deeper videos are starting in. You don't no, know should what... have been deeper. Deep, Sorry, deeper. Uh, uh, if you don't know what deeper videos are, uh, they're great videos that Steve puts together every week. He usually goes live on a Tuesday on our channels. Um, and he basically takes the message from that Sunday and goes deeper. It's good that. And they're really good, really, really good input for you really studying the Bible and taking God's word seriously. Um, and they're also on podcast, which many of us prefer because mm. they look better on podcast. Um, rude. That was a bit rude. Anyway. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so moving on. Um, we also have after church coffee today, yes, which is... What it says, it is coffee it's, after church. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to have coffee. You could have something else. You yeah, you don't but, have to have you know, coffee. Coffee beats in the, in the hot drinks competition. In, in our really. opinions, but yeah. you might have a different preference. Um, anyway, after church today, after this service now, we are going to have Mark and Nick joining us with coffee on Zoom or whatever your preferred drink is and a chat with different people. Is Zoom a drink? You said Zoom or whatever my favourite drink oh, is. Here we go. Classic. So anyway... We need to, you know, roll on. You can join us at the church for a coffee um, where you can potentially meet some more people and have a good time. So make sure you connect with our email that comes every week to find the link. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, and the, another notice. Oh, we have that APC what's in me thingy coming up, right. don't we? This is my turn. Okay, you ready? I'm doing great. That I'm, I've learned day. all this stuff. Yeah, so, all the news. We have... The APCM wow. in two weeks' time. So an APCM, basically, it's the annual parochial church meeting, which is posh words of saying... AGM. We're going to get together and hang out and like talk about great things that have happened this year, yeah. have some reports, but also people that are on the electoral roll at church will be able to vote in new members of our church council, which is super important. Ooh. Um, because those are people that really have some something to say about what happens in the life of our church and really move things forward. So please do join us for that two weeks today. You will okay. get an email about it. Great. Well, speaking of people that are very much part of our church family, uh, we are going to find out what the wonderful children Ooh. as part of CCS are up to today with Connect Kids. This week's episode of Connect Kids. We got a really good episode we have. this week, haven't we? We're going to have some fun, obviously. Yeah. Games. We're going to have a story. And the story today is all yeah. about the lost Emily. What? The lost Emily. Y yeah, isn't it? No, no, it's about it's about the lost son. Oh. Emily's. Um, oh wow. Well. I, I don't know why she. Emily's not lost. I haven't seen her for a little while. Yeah, but she's not she lost. lost. She got married. Oh, she? that's where Emily that's is. Where she's We've been. not lost Emily. Oh, Don't you. worry, she'll oh. be back. Oh good. She's okay. not eating pig food or anything no. like that oh, that we know of. No. Um, no. We're going to talk about the parable of the lost son today, though. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to share some thoughts about forgiveness. Oh, good. Oh, but good. to start off, we're going to have one of our games. Yes.
Well, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's it is it is really great fun uh, making Kanat kids, isn't True. it? And I I actually I actually feel like. Uh, it, it gives me a chance to remind myself of some of the basics of what we believe as Christians, ah, uh, which I find really valuable. I, I don't know about, yeah. Oh, about yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Um, in fact, if you are someone who maybe feels you could benefit from some time looking at the basics of the Christian beliefs, maybe Steve Sermons just go over your head. Uh, or maybe you have a friend who seems particularly interested in your faith, uh, you might like to find out about the Alpha course with them. Uh, it's a great 12-week program, giving you a chance to explore the key themes of what personal relationship with Jesus looks like. Go and check out the page on our church website uh, to get in, and get in touch if you're interested, and we can let you know when we can start a course. Brilliant. So we're going to use a psalm today to draw us into praise and worship. So you may want to reflect on these words or use them as your own worship or prayer. Psalm 28, 6 to 9. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever.
God, we thank you that you are strong, you are mighty, you are victorious. Lord, thank you that you are our strength and shields, that we can put our trust in you. And as we come to you this morning in worship, in praise, we bring ourselves, we put our trust in you, Jesus, afresh. We bring everything about us, all the good bits, all the bad bits, and we bring them and put them at the foot of your cross, knowing that you love us, that you accept us, that you love us too much to leave us where we are or how we are, but that you embrace us and forgive us. Because you are a wonderful, gracious God. Thank you, Lord, that you are our protector and our Father. Amen. Amen. Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. The promised glory of the new house. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Ask them, who of you is left, who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong. O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord, be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work. For I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. And my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations. And the desired of all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Good morning, Christchurch. It is so good to be with you today. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We are uh, continuing our series of sermons on the book of Haggai, and today, as you've heard, we're up to chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. And last week we saw how Haggai came to proclaim to the returning people of Jerusalem to start again the rebuilding of the temple after it laid just with the foundations built for 14 years and then not one brick laid on top of another. And uh, he called them out on that and called them to stop focusing on themselves uh, and to focus on, on effectively the things of God. The temple wasn't simply a building. The temple was the, the focus of their faith. It was the focus of their community. It was so much more than the building. It was the, the physical um, epitome of all that God was and in it would dwell his glory. So it was vital that they rebuild the temple uh, and here it's uh, just a few weeks further on and they've started the work but there's something going on here as you will probably have gathered by the reading there's there's some chatter going on and Christians are, are no, not immune to this either are they you know when, when something about God's work is happening there's always a negative voice somewhere and in this particular case, what we have are some of those who could remember, vaguely just remember, 
the original temple that had been destroyed by the Babylonians. They could remember how amazing and impressive that building was. And they looked at the new temple as it was being built. And they're saying, well, it's not as good as it used to be. In fact, you can read in Ezra uh, chapter 3, even as they built the foundations, they had a big celebration. And amongst all the shouts of praise, it says that there were wails and weeping as well from those who could remember how it used to be. And that's it's just like no different to the church, is it? No matter what people start with in church, there's always someone saying, well, it was better in the old days. It used to be better like this. It used to be better when we did that. There's a constant looking back. And so looking to today and looking forward to the things of God. And in our reading, we heard God ask three questions. He says, who of you is left who can remember the former glory of this house? And it was only a small number of people. It's 70 years since that old temple had been pulled down. So it is a few people, but it only takes a few people to disrupt the work of God with a negative voice. And he says to them, how does it look to you now? Does it look as if it's nothing? And it's almost like God's saying, look, I know it's different. After all, God has ordained this. God had called them to rebuild the temple. And he knows it's different to how it was in the past. And that's important for us today. See, there's a danger and there's a difficulty with comparison, isn't it? Uh, and comparison is a huge thing for people today, especially those who, who love to go through social media and they compare their lives to the lives of other people who are showing their best bits on social media, not their worst bits. And it's pretty much like that with churches. Because you can go on the internet now, you can go on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube particularly and see all the best bits of what other churches are doing. Or we can think back to the past and try and remember what it looked like. But we always look at the past with rose-tinted glasses. And what we do is we compare what we're involved in or what our church is doing and say, well, it doesn't seem as good as what they're doing over there. Or it doesn't seem to be as good as how it used to be in the past. I've been around church long enough to know that every generation, every church era, every church currently, no matter how it looks, has its issues. No church is perfect. We've all heard that, haven't we? And yet in our comparison, what we're doing is saying, well, that seems to be better than ours. And of course, it's never the case, really. And what we have here is the people of Israel looking back and comparing, saying it doesn't seem to be as good as it used to be. I've been in a number of churches that where I've heard about this kind of golden era of that particular church, whether that was kind of 20, 30, 50, 70 years ago. And you'll hear people say, oh, the church used to be full. And yet <laughs> we have records that show it never was. It was never full. But we look back sometimes and almost retell history in a different kind of way. And sometimes it's far from reality. There's a danger in comparison. We're not always comparing like for like. We're not always comparing things equally or even fairly. And of course, particularly when we look back, we don't remember the issues in the past. Sometimes we just remember the good times. We just remember the good things that happened. And here for the people of Israel, there was a small number of people who were looking back and remembering how it used to be and disrupting what was going on by constantly saying, it used to be better. And what we hear is God saying this to them. Look, I know this is what's going on. But then he reminds them of one thing and that's his faithfulness. He says to them, I am with you. And then he says, and my spirit remains among you. 
The same spirit that used to be at work in the temple is still at work in the people of God then. And that's, that's something to hold on to for these people, that it's the same God. The temple might be different, but that doesn't matter. It is the same God who is at work amongst them and is with them. And for us, we have to hold on to that too, don't we? It is the same God at work in our church as in every other church. It's the same God that's at work now, who used to be at work in our church 50, 60 years ago. At the moment, we're, we're doing some research on the history of the church, because our 200th anniversary soon, and we're hoping to have a, an exhibition describing our story. And the one thing I can guarantee we will, we will avoid saying is that it used to be better back then, because that is not true. It is the same God at work then as at work now. And that is what we hold on to. But after this declaration of his faithfulness, he then gives three commands. What are those commands? He says, be strong. And I think that it's almost like he's saying, hold your nerve, carry on doing the work. Don't be put off by the naysayers and the doom mongers and, and those who are looking back and looking at the present with a negative eye and expressing their disappointment. Because that's just discouraging, isn't it? He's saying, be strong and stay focused on the work. And then he says, do not be afraid. And the one thing that they had struggled with in the rebuilding of the temple was that they'd faced opposition and even persecution. And as they start to rebuild the temple again, it's almost like the something, well, will this come again? Will the same persecution and opposition come against us? And he's saying, don't be afraid. And then he says, work. Get on with the work I have tasked you to do. Be strong, hold your nerve. Don't be afraid, get on with the work. That feels like, to me at least, that feels like commands to us today as we try and come out of this whole pandemic and the restrictions we've been in, as we look around us into a, a changing environment, it's easy to be afraid, it's easy to be uncertain, but I'm sure God's saying, look, be strong, hold your nerve, trust in my presence with you. Let's get on with the work. I don't know what that work might be for us, but I'm sure he's going to show us. He is going to show us. And then what we have right at the end is a promise from God here to the people of Israel. What does he say? The glory of this present house, the house that they are building, will be greater than the glory of the former house. Despite people saying it used to be better, God's saying, look, the glory of this house will be better than that. See, we, we look at things through our own eyes, don't we? And we make our judgments according to whatever criteria we want to conjure up at that particular time. A church, another church, could look good because it has a great band or lights or lots of young people or lots of activities in the community. We can look and judge things according to whatever criteria we think is important at that particular moment in time. But we are simply judging with our own eyes. We don't always see things as God sees them. And when God's speaking to this people now in, the, in this book, you say, look, you, you're looking at the outside of this temple and maybe it's not as big as it used to be. And maybe it doesn't look as glorious as it used to be. But what I am going to do in it is going to be more special than what I did in the previous temple. And in the end, we should not be deceived by appearances. Sometimes the smallest church that looks like it's struggling, it can have the biggest impact in the community simply because of the presence of God amongst the people. The biggest church could be struggling in all sorts of ways. We just don't see it. I remember Bishop Paul talking about uh, our desire in a diocese is to build a bigger church. We want to see more people knowing Jesus. Absolutely, we want to see that. But the other part of our vision 
is to make a bigger difference. A bigger church making a bigger difference. And you can actually have a bigger church that actually makes no difference. And Bishop Paul talked about a friend of his who had a huge church. And he said, you've got a really big church. And his friend said, no, I haven't. I've got a fat and lazy church. And that's important for us to hear, isn't it? That bigger does not mean better if it is not living out the purposes of God. And small can be beautiful if it is living out the the purposes of God and dwelling in his presence. That's what really matters. Let's not be deceived by how things look. And you know, as we start to move into doing, trying to find out what new things God wants us to do, it might be that we will start some new things and they may seem small and almost insignificant. And we'll look back to some of the big things that we used to do at Christ Church. And yet these small, insignificant things actually in God's hands may have a bigger impact than anything we've ever done. That's how God's kingdom works. And when we are seeking first the kingdom, we have to put aside how we perceive things and try and see things as God sees them so that we may partner with him properly, whether it is in the big glorious things or in the small seemingly insignificant things. It's what God does with that that really matters. It's his presence, isn't it? Let's not be deceived by appearances. And what does God say right at the end? He says, in this place, I will grant peace. Here's a people who had faced persecution, who had faced oppression, who had been exiled and now coming back. And here in this, what seems to be an insignificant temple compared to the previous one, he promises them a peace that they never experienced before in that previous temple. You know, I am excited about the future for the church here in Southport. I'm excited about the future for Christ Church. But you know what? I just want to see God work. I'm excited because I really believe that no matter what we do, the glory of God in what we do may be bigger and more important and more significant and more impactful than anything we've ever done before. Let's not be deceived by appearances. Let's not get caught just looking back. But let's look forward to see what God will do amongst us. Let's just hold on to that thought for a moment. Let me encourage you just to where you are to, to stop kind of processing things and just to hear God. To take the time to stop and listen to him. What is God saying to you right now? And I really feel something of what I said will kind of stir some people. Stir some people who have been tempted to look back a lot. See, God wants you to be involved in what he has planned both now and in the future. And the more you look back, the less likely you are to be involved and partner with him in what he's doing now. I think God's calling you now. And you can feel that. You can sense something of that. I also feel that, really feel that God wants to say something to some people. To say something about getting to work. You You felt a call from God in some way. You've felt that upon your life for a long time and you've kind of ignored it. And here what God wants to say to you, be strong, don't be afraid. He is calling you to partner with him in what is to come. And you, only you have an idea what that is. I don't, but I think God wants to emphasize to some of you, he is calling you to action. He's calling you to be part of the people who are building his kingdom here and now. Let me just pray. Father, I thank you for this passage. I want to thank you for the way it speaks to us today. 
Help us, O Lord, to hear your voice. Help us, O Lord, to hear what you're saying to us. Help us, Lord, to not simply compare ourselves to other churches or other generations and think that in some way we are less, that we are not what we should be. Help us, Lord, to focus on what you're doing amongst us now. Help us to see how you are at work and how we can work with you. Lord, we want to be involved in the building of your kingdom here. So Lord, help us to see what you're doing. Give us the boldness to step into action. And Lord, we pray that whatever we do now, whatever we step into, that the glory of what will be will be greater than the glory of what was. That your presence amongst us, your power amongst us, will outshine anything that has ever happened before in the wonderful 200 years history of Christ Church. Lord, we want to look forward with faith. We want to look forward with hope. We want to look forward with a sense of certainty that you are with us. So Lord, we pray now, help us to lift our eyes to the future. Help us to see what's going on around us. Help us to see where you're at work. And give us the courage, Lord, to join in with you believing that you can do something significant amongst us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever see. Open up.
Father God, today we're saying that we will build our lives on you, build our lives on your love, that we will allow you to lead us in your love to those around us. The line of that song is so beautiful. And we pray that you would help us to look forward and to know that the best is yet to come. And I'm reminded of Philippians 3 verse 14 that says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. We pray that you would help us to press on towards the goal. And we know that you've called us heavenward and you've called us forward not to look backward. And we thank you so much for who you are and all you do in our lives. And we thank you that the best is yet to come. We thank you that we have hope for the future. And we love you. We're, uh, we're going to head over to Chris now, who's going to lead us in our final prayers for our service today. Hello. We're going to be praying together for just a few minutes. So let's begin by being still, just briefly, to turn our hearts and our thoughts towards our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we first bring you great thanks for your faithfulness, your love, your kindness, your forgiveness, your watching over us, which is so much more affectionate and committed and devoted and powerful than anything we imagine. Thank you, above all things, for the gift of your Son and all that comes through him and through that other great gift of your Holy Spirit, thank you for this season, this hopeful season of spring and Easter. Thank you for all manner of things budding and coming back to life. Thank you for the birds and the sky and the sun and the summer breezes not quite warmed up yet. Thank you for the simple pleasures of sitting in our gardens or going for a walk and seeing the trees and the daffodils, and the return of life. So many gifts for which to give you thanks, and we bring our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you're aware, but recently it was published that there had been a survey by which of over 4,000 people on 97 of our seaside towns in the UK and Southport came 85th out of 97. That's near the bottom, not near the top. Out of five stars, uh, we scored two for our beach, two for our attractions, two for scenery, two for value for money, and three for peace and quiet. So, Let's pray a prayer for Southport, what I wrote a few weeks ago. Heavenly Father, who told your people long ago to pray for the prosperity and welfare of even the land of Babylonia where they were captives, we bring before you our town of Southport. We pray that you will protect Southport, that you will provide for Southport, that you will prosper Southport, and that you will promote Southport. Father, we pray that you will protect Southport from the worst effects of COVID-19, from infection and transmission and long-term harm and death, from unemployment, from poverty, from businesses going under, from depression and anxiety and loneliness, as we ask for all who are especially vulnerable at this time. We pray you will protect our children from losing out on their learning. We ask that you will cast a special protection over our care homes, 
make them places of happiness and friendship and the warmth of true caring. May their staff receive a fair wage and satisfaction from their work. We ask that you will protect the community of Southport from those who take advantage of people's frailty and anxiety to deceive and defraud them. Grant the police success in rooting out such heartless criminals. Next we pray that you will provide for Southport, that you will provide for its shops, its offices, its schools, its hospitals and surgeries and dental practices and all our healthcare workers. Provide for its businesses and industries and tradesmen, its clubs and pubs and bars and hotels and little corner kiosks. Provide for its places of worship and fitness and learning of all kinds. And then, Lord, we pray that you will prosper Southport, that you will actually pour prosperity into our town, that people may have enough not just to live on, but to be comfortable and to have good lives and good pensions and holidays and freedom to be able to eat out, go to the pub, go to the cinema, go to the theatre, play football and golf and tennis and enjoy the life of Southport together. Finally, Lord, we pray that you will promote Southport. We thank you for the huge grant that has been given to our town for the renovation of parts of its attractions for holidaymakers. We pray that that money will be well spent and that none of it will be wasted and that it will indeed lead to the renewed prosperity of Lord Street and of the seafront and the lake and our B&Bs and hotels. We ask that people will come to Southport for days out and holidays again in huge numbers, all of which will restore the fame and happiness of this place where we live, where we belong, and which we lift to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. We would really recommend connecting with us in some way, perhaps mm. one of the many missional communities that make up Christchurch. You know, particularly if you're new, you're worshipping with us today for the first time or you've been around a few weeks, you might want to connect with us and make sure you can connect, connect with other people and make some friends. It's great yeah. to make friends, isn't it? We pray that you have a blessed week and we look forward to joining with you again. See you soon. Bye. Hi, we're Mark and Nick, and we run the After Church Coffee that we run online. We'd like to invite you to join us. Um, we meet at quarter to twelve every Sunday for half an hour. It's just a chance to get to chat with people and be a sense of community. If you want to be part of that, the link goes out every single week and um, to every person that receives the weekly emails from church. If you're not on that list, feel free to contact the church office and they can put you on that list. If you need any technical support at all, feel free just to ask the church office and they can send you a clip about joining Zoom online. Look forward to seeing you. See you Sunday. Bye. Bye.